nine o'clock, and I would like to uh, stick with the timetable that we have planned today. So welcome everybody to this webinar, the first of two, the second one will be tomorrow. And those webinars, as you have seen from the agenda, uh, have the final aim to show the results of an important project that has been carried out, uh, we will see afterwards in the opening, inside the EIT urban mobility community. Um, today we will have an opening where the city of Milan will uh, give us the real welcome to this webinar. Then uh, myself, uh, I am Laura Mazzala from uh, Fondazione Polita. Laura, I think your microphone went on mute. Uh, Laura, please, uh, we don't uh, hear you. Your microphone is on mute. Now you hear me? Yes. Perfect. OK, thank you. So I, I start once again. So welcome to this webinar. Um, this webinar is based uh, on the results that this project that you will uh, know throughout the webinar itself uh, has put on the table for cities. And uh, as I was saying before, um, I will be the chair of this webinar. I'm Laura Mazzala from Fondazione Politecnico di Milano. This webinar will be articulated with an opening section where the city of Milan will give us the real welcome to this webinar and then an opening section that uh, We'll see as well some uh, brief information that I will give you on the context of this project. Then uh, you will be guided through the uh, technical steps uh, uh, and results of sold project uh, by the experts. Um, it, there will be one change. The change is uh, related to the presentation of uh, Professor Tamas Mutrai. Uh, since unfortunately due to personal reasons he won't be able to join us um, but he sent us the, his presentation so I will do my best to show you the results of his work. Um, some a few indications that you can see as well uh, um, in the monitor on the monitor um, are the instructions how to deal with, with uh, this webinar. Please switch off your cameras, switch off your microphone and uh, whenever you have answer uh, questions, please put them in the chat. I kindly ask you in order to properly receive the question that when you use the chat, you put the name of the speaker and then the question that you want to go to make. All the questions will be collected and will be um, answered at the end of the webinar itself. I think that now we can uh, start our webinar and so I give the floor to Angelo Pascale from uh, Comune di Milano. Yes, here I am. Good morning everybody and uh, thank you for, for being here. I see a lot of people in, in the waiting room. I'm continuing accepting them. And um, well, don't mind, don't mind about that. Uh, there is um, Maria that will do us will do that for us. So just ah, okay. go <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you, Laura. Um, as you already know, I think uh, Milan is a core partner of the EIT uh, because because since the beginning of this adventure, Milan had always been convinced that urban mobility is a topic strategic for cities and their citizens. Um, you know that uh, among the, uh, there are, I think, eight kicks in uh, Europe, uh, health, uh, climate, digital, uh, raw materials, but uh, the urban mobility kick is the only one in which cities are core partners. And this is very important. And in fact, inside uh, our kick, uh, there is a city club uh, that uh, state the challenges uh, for for cities according to urban mobility topics. And uh, we try to focus. We want that the kick focus on the, 
on the, on this on these uh, challenges. Uh, we are convinced as a city that the urban mobility could uh, uh, reshape the way citizens live their cities and and people could try to change their behavior. For example, trying to live without their own private car parked under their home as uh, they do at present. But uh, what had convinced Milan to participate to the kick to or to the to this urban mobility kick is the innovative profile of the kick itself and the participation of many other cities so different each other, but nevertheless with a common issue uh, that is to live better in um, in urban space. And under under this point, so under this point of view. Uh, mobility is a strategic asset uh, and uh, city, uh, city, cities have to improve it uh, and invest. Invest in terms of innovation and uh, uh, smart solution. I, I want to speak some, uh, I want to say something about the present pandemic, not to bother you because I know everybody is uh, concerned on, uh, on uh, due to the pandemic, uh, but uh, just uh, a, a short reflection by, by myself that the present pandemic has had a hard lesson for cities, a new challenge cities have to face with. And I think, I think as a Milan as a city thinks that only innovation as smart solution could provide the right answer to the to these issues. Uh, issues that is going to change our our, our habits forever. Uh, we are afraid. Uh, in this uh, in this sense, uh, we are convinced that smart solution as soul is. Uh, could improve uh, the mobility, could improve the, the right um, choice of a uh, mobility hub and uh, cities as Milan are very concerned on this, on this topic. Uh, I, fin I finished my short introduction. I hope you had a good time with the Laura, Dario and other uh, so partners and uh, wish all the best for you. Thank you everybody. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Dr. Pascale uh, for this uh, welcome. Then uh, the floor is on my, on my, the ball is on my court. So I will give you this short presentation in order to make clear um, the context where this project has been developed and in the specific, I hope you can see my presentation. If not, just let me know. Uh, what I would like to share with you is uh, a full knowledge regarding the EIT Urban Mobility, which is a community that belongs to the European Institution of Innovation and Technology, which is a body that has been created by the European Union in 2008. Please switch off your microphone, otherwise there will be an echo. Thanks a lot. Uh, to strengthen Europe's ability to innovate, and in the specific, what the AT Urban Mobility is doing here is to create, as uh, Dr. Pascale was saying before, more livable urban spaces so throughout. Uh, about the uh, definition of uh, a strategic research agenda to improve the multimodal transport system, to increase the green and efficiency of uh, the city logistic, to create uh, um, a mobility system that is able to take in consideration not only mobility itself, but as well health and well-being of people, and also to create an environment which is, yes, green, but as well human friendly. And uh, in the end, the final goal is to deliver to the citizen a sustainable transport system. So what happened is that uh, inside this context, inside these needs, inside this action that uh, ET Urban Mobility is taking to accelerate the transition, 
um, it was possible to um, put together a consortium um, that is able to answer to this type of challenges that you can see put here. So provide a systemic solution to the needs of the city, bring together stakeholders, uh, um, public and the private um, um, systems, and as well to deploy and scale new solution in our city. This slide, you can see the concept of soul that has um, uh, has been born inside this community. Uh, first of all, you can see that the consortium is a, a public and private partnership where cities are there. Three main cities we have in this consortium: we have city of Milan, city of Barcelona, and city of Opendoe. But then, but then, what we have as well are the universities that are, are the research center are the uh, part of the consortium that have the big knowledge of implementing innovation uh, inside uh, the uh, market and inside the research. And then we have as well the uh, real stakeholders, so the industry with Skoda and more. What is doing this consortium or what have done this consortium throughout this year? Uh, he had tried to answer to one important question that the cities nowadays have. How can data exploitation enable future urban mobility system to be more collaborative, user center, eco efficient and safe. So they have tried to answer to this question with this project. SOL is an acronym, but it stands for Smart Mobility Hub Platform. So they have tried to answer to this question with a platform, with a DSS that you will be able to know throughout this webinar. This is the end of my uh, my opening. So now I give the floor to the technical um, to the technical guys, to the people that have worked hard during this year. And the first of all is uh, Professor Milos Manedovic from Alte University that will tell us the new concept that they have created throughout this year to solve cities problem and to answer the problems that we have put on the table before. So Milos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Laura. Let me know if you can see my um, my slides. Uh, otherwise, thank you for the introduction and greetings from uh, Alto University. So I'll, I'll take um, five to ten minutes briefly um, to bring us up to speed to uh, focus on um, what are we talking about here as a new concept um, around urban mobility hubs. Um, so that's um, the focus of, to, of, to, of this brief um, brief talk. And of course, as already uh, mentioned by Angela, we're dealing with a, uh, a range of different challenges. Uh, when we even talk about um, urban mobility hubs, we have a range of different goals. And these goals are not necessarily always um, in line with each other. They require trade-offs. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, we have some some there listed, so we have to talk about carbon, carbon emissions, energy consumption, noise, safety, security, accessibility, eventually also for these operating hubs uh, for 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 urban mobility hubs also operating revenue, many other things uh, are at uh, are at stake, and then uh, the the fundamental challenge that we have is that uh, urban mobility hubs are almost uh, like a small city uh, in itself. Uh, with a range of uh, different kinds of uh, challenges, but the fundamental challenge at the core uh, or behind all the challenges that, that you need to understand both the system level and the user level uh, aspects. So uh, understanding system level means, for example, mode choice uh, or aggregate sort of patterns of, uh, of mode split. And then uh, larger questions of integration of different kinds of systems and infrastructures that are there in urban mobility hubs. On the other side, uh, from the user perspective, we're talking about, about behavioral change uh, that uh, is not necessarily uh, one size fits all. So we need to kind of respond to a, a wide diversity of requirements that different uh, hub users have at the end of the day. So then when we start making um, decisions uh, about hubs, the question is what kind of decisions are we actually making? And that's another 
challenging aspect. The fact is that we have these decisions um, distributed across, across space, time, and usually across a range of different stakeholders. Our colleagues will tell you a bit more about these aspects, but we have planning decisions. Um, so in the case, for example, of Eindhoven, uh, they uh, do not have the urban mobility hub yet put in place, so they had to also think about, um, for example, the location of this hub uh, in connection to the larger uh, structure of public transport network. But then there are many other kinds of uh, decision domains, so design decisions. We know that we need to be, for example, electrifying our, our vehicle fleet, so that's, that's one of those um, uh, aspects of decision making, but on the other side, we also have a lot of management operations decisions. And um, we have, of course, also in the in, in, in the Nordic scene more um, incoming weather uh, in the past uh, several years. On top of the fact that these decisions are distributed, we also face a lot of different uncertainties. So we are not just um, uh, talking about the core uncertainties of, of behavioral change, how will people uh, behave, but they, of course, um, associate with uh, a range of different ones. We don't necessarily know how many of these uh, services and technologies that we are talking about nowadays, such as mobility as a service, how will they eventually develop? Uh, then we, of course, have a lot of different things. Uh, we mentioned that uh, urban mobility hubs are almost like a small city, so we have a lot of different um, infrastructural and, and digital components. On top of the, the transport services, you have also other kinds of services. That's why these are uh, supposed to be important uh, areas in the city that are also providing a lot of different kinds of uh, services. And, and, and this all brings a lot of people. A lot of people, um, so a large number of, of users and of course also large diversity of, of users with different requirements from you know children uh, to parents with, uh, with prams to you know, people with walking challenges to uh, people with um, side challenges to sort of a, 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 lot, a lot of people who are kind of rushing to work and, and some people who are uh, trying to find some services as part of their uh, larger daily, daily journey. Um, as part of today, we will also talk about the, the scope of, of Seoul. Of course, we have to recognize that there is a lot of tools that we already have, and this is just a uh, one list, so we have a lot of different tools already there um, in in the mobility sector. We're not, uh, of course, starting from scratch. So there are, you know, tools for data collection, for analysis, for different kinds of analysis, and that's basically what this has always been um, the domain of, of development and uh, to kind of improve uh, improve decision making. But we, of course, the, would like to argue that um, within the scope of our project, we have identified that these tools are not necessarily answering the actual complexity of uh, decision making context that you are facing in um, modern urban mobility hubs. And we can, of course, talk about later on why these are, um, why these tools are not necessarily uh, responding uh, to these these kinds of needs that we have in urban mobility hubs. So the focus of uh, the sole decision support system, uh, as uh, abbreviated as DSS, is uh, a range of, of, of different aspects. So we are in the domain of, as we are talking about transition of um, urban mobility hubs and the space and assigned and all these kind of re redesigned questions, many, many different decisions that we're facing. We've, we, of course, have to face decisions how to be treat our, our decision um, processes. Uh, so, of course, these decision processes cannot focus anymore just on the hub level, kind of the system level uh, perspective, which is mostly what we have been doing before. We need to really understand the users and diversity of their perspectives. And then on top of that, we need to understand that um, there is no one single knowledge that uh, is actually um, needed for uh, making decisions about urban mobility hubs. We need to uh, bring a range of different uh, people around uh, a decision support system with the different, different knowledges of transport, of services, of infrastructure aspects um, that are there and kind of even behavioral aspects and many other things um, 
that are there. So we need uh, not just kind of limited, limited technical tools that are there to analyze, uh, in a sense, objectively some things, but they need to facilitate communication, this kind of knowledge exchange to discussion, and of course they need to, um, uh, of course, focus on data analysis, but data analysis that is useful for this kind of a multi-dimensional evaluation that we're talking about, both on the on the system level and the user level. One of those things that um, has always been a challenge in our um, processes and, and tools before they should provide some kind of a process memory over over longer time and, and um, enable us to understand how do we how do we make decisions over time so we can actually learn uh, from those those decisions. Um, so the focus of, of Sol DSS basically is that on a technical level, of course, is um, um, a web based modular design. Some of these um, modules that we have um, in mind with, of course, different kinds of users, um, in this case, DSS users that will have different levels of access. So modular structure would allow uh, focusing on certain aspects um, during different kinds of decision processes. And we will talk about that um, a bit a bit further. But this is the, the general setup of the modular structure that we have goals, validation, aspects of the system level, the user level, some aspects of actions actually done uh, around uh, the hubs and then some module that will actually allow this dashboard control aspects of version control and so on. So yes, that's uh, all I had to um, say for this, this beginning part. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Milos, for your interesting presentation. Now we can uh, move further in uh, our webinar. I remind you that if you have a specific question on this presentation, uh, you can use the chat, go to the name of the speaker, and then the question that uh, you are interested to make to him. Now we are moving on and then we go to Dario Mertori from Amat that uh, tell us uh, the type of data framework that we need if we want to um, create uh, in reality a DSS such as the one Milos has just presented us. So Dario, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Just a moment to share my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am Dario Mertoli, transport engineer and uh, activity leader for AMAT and Comune di Milano in the SOL project. Today, we are dealing with about data framework, an important source for SOL DSS. The main contents are the work packages, number three of the activities, data collection integration, because one of common needs of the three cities, Milano, Barcelona, and Dover, is ensure the data collection integration and define um, one of uh, functional requirements. And uh, we analyze the, each task of WP3. So in order to implement a data collection structure and create a digital environment useful for DSS development in these uh, work pages, was necessary to define a smart and effective uh, data management thanks to the involvement of the three cities um, that grow in their experience, highlighting the issues and best practice in data model, data sharing, and post processing. As, um, for this reason, this work page was divided into three tasks framework for data collection, data collection strategies, and data collection structure. And these activities have been carrying out thanks to a research group of uh, um, University of Milano Bicocca and thanks to Professor Andrea Andrea Morino. So during early birds in um, 2019, a questionnaire has been, uh, has been built in order to evaluate the stakeholder perspective on mobility services. The main outcomes show that municipalities are collecting data from mobility and is uh, evident uh, that a good distribution of information is available in the city department. But those data are not used for planning because the stakeholders are not satisfied with the quality of data. Moreover, sorry, sorry, some... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt yes. you. We do not see any more your presentation. 
What? We are not seeing, now. We are not seeing your presentation anymore. Just one. Okay. <clears throat> Now? Yes, now. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, some answers show that the regulation um, and the legislation, but also technical aspects, low compatibility, are uh, obstacles um, for implementation of new mobility solution. So, for each cities, we analyze and report the main data providers and available data set for Milano, thanks to the municipality with the support of AMAT. AMAT is the Agency of Mobility, Environment, Territory of Comune di Milano that manages and updates the main data set of the city of Milano, like parking, bus lane, road accident, shared mobility service information, and the others. The other main data, um, data providers are Public Transport Company of Milano, Trenord, Regional Rail Transport Operators, and RFE, owner of Railway National Network. For Barcelona, we have Metropolitan Barcelona Transport, and the Regional Railway Operators, National Network Spanish Railway, Barcelona Municipal Services, and Barcelona City Council. Instead, in Endoven, we collect uh, data about parking, cycle count data, shared mobility fleet data, and to have national data warehouse for public transport and for uh, road data. In the first task, framework for data collection, the main, the main purpose is to investigate and analyze the data set available in each mobility hub, define a data collection methodology, define the actor involved in the data management. For this reason, the aim is to use a spreadsheet to collect metadata about the data set available requiring two three cities, several info like uh, local name, abstract, keywords, ownership, GDPR, frequency, volume, and so on. The main, um, the main outcomes are reported in the following graph, and thanks to the contribution of three cities, we have been gathered about 76 data sets. We um, see um, that the about 40% of the data set are collected in uh, public transport following shared mobility. The GDPR is not used since the sensitive data are not uh, used or because it is needed to register it on the web portal. 73% uh, of, uh, of metadata don't use a metadata schema. And the uh, access mode is carrying out uh, a through access on web portal or also API. We have a common format of data like CSV, Excel, um, XLS, JSON, but it needed to align the presence of the GTFS data for each city. So uh, the main results are the similarity in most of data provided by the free city, the lack of common metadata, the technical problem with the data set declared like private and the availability of information about public transport shared mobility can provide enough data for mobility or forecast analysis. The second step, data collection strategies, represent the final version of the list of data set of the data set catalog. For this reason, we propose a survey which insert a data set or group of data set and deep in the data collection strategies and data management. For this reason, we propose a questionnaire in line survey tool, considering about 35 questions, is a mixture to closed ended question or open ended question. The survey is divided in uh, several sections background question, data source identification, about uh, if the data sets are, ex uh, are external, internal, the type of agreement between the data owner, data providers, the data collection um, phase, the data enrichment, data transformation, data storage, and data quality assessment, and metadata. From the um, graph, we can see that the 78% of the data set are external. The data collection methods are um, through 
is through um, dump file or streaming, and the more water data, a lot of data sets are collected through data file and API. A lot of data sets don't use enrichment method, and the 58% don't transform of the, the, the data. The data storage, the, the data are stored locally in the in organization or in Endoven in, in, uh, in cloud. And 68% of the data don't implement uh, data quality assessment. So the main results are the most of the data set are external, the frequency of the data set is daily, several external data are retrieved through data file in the API. The reason of the transformation of the data is a very high volume or because the format not comply with open data portal. The many data sets are stored locally and most of the data sets don't follow a data quality assessment process. Regarding the quality dimension, the most considered one is the consistency assessed by applying rules such as foreign key constraints, numerical range, etc. The next step in this week is the data collection structure, the final step of WP3. Build and integrate a level data structure, including all the top level concepts used by each municipality. Use an entity relationship as data model able to describe concepts and their relationship. So, the gains to the data frame of the social project are the its concept in the local source of a municipality could be mapped in terms of the unique global schema. All analysis will be realized on global schema and all analysis can be applied to a data, to data of local source and the full exploitation of the dashboard and analysis. That will be defined in another work page, the DSS framework design. That's all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dario, because uh, with, with, with this presentation, I think that we give uh, a good hint of the difficulties in uh, managing uh, the set of data that normally a municipality has. But at the same time, uh, I think that it was quite crystal clear that these data represent the basis for the working of the DSS that Minos was describing before. Then we have uh, another puzzle piece to put here that uh, is the one related to citizens. Um, unfortunately, as I was saying before, Professor Matra is not here. Um, I guess since he had a personal problem, so I will do my best to transmit the message of the work that they have performed in the WP5 of the SOL project throughout the presentation that I shared with me. So here, I guess now you can see the presentation. Um, it, with this presentation and in these 10 minutes, uh, I will try to um, tell you how it was possible in this project to put inside the concept of the DSS as well the perspective of the user, so the citizens uh, and uh, all the mobility users that we have in our cities. This is extremely important. Why? Because uh, if you have to deliver to the municipality an instrument, which is a DSS, uh, to plan, to design, to optimize smart mobility app, you cannot avoid to have this information in DSS itself. Otherwise, the big risk is that you create a beautiful uh, smart mobility app, which is not functional to the region destination needs that the citizens normally had. So the big work that BME and Alto and all the cities that have been involved in this project have done during the running of this year of Seoul was to um, uh, work with the stakeholders to understand the needs of the stakeholders, work with the citizens to understand the needs of the citizens. And this was uh, all made throughout online surveys, because even though at the beginning it was thought to have a face-to-face -face interaction with those, those groups, then COVID arrived and, and we had to uh, change completely the methodology and the approach. 
So in spring, um, uh, the work package uh, leader and BME and the partner work together to collect the data from the stakeholders uh, and prepare personas and customer service provider interaction always online. And then we arrive in autumn and then we arrive now in autumn winter, uh, winter to conducting online survey both from uh, a stakeholder perspective and for a citizen perspective. Um, understanding customer experience, uh, as I was saying before, is important, but on the other hand, it is as well extremely important to understand the customer service provider relationship. That's why uh, starting from uh, the uh, final aim of this DSS, uh, the working group uh, um, got familiar with the potential DSS user needs that are coming on one end from the city representatives and mob mobility service providers, but as well from not mobility service provider, because mobility is a complex system which is made by different actors. Um, and in the end, uh, uh, once uh, it was possible to uh, achieve this familiarity with the DSS user need, it was as well important to achieve familiarity with the app user, so with us that uh, we are using the hub in order to satisfy our mobility needs. Because in the end, if we want the DSS working, it is important to create customer journey maps that is integrated in this DSS, because otherwise the hub won't be able to answer to the uh, customer needs in terms of mobility. Here you can see an overall uh, um, picture of the data collection process that has been carried out inside the project throughout focus group with city representatives, no mobility service provider and with users. So online service were collected, were cross checked, cross mixed so as to uh, eventually arrive to online interviews. So first of all, survey where the needs were um, identified, categorized uh, and put black and white. And then uh, from those needs, it was possible to create specific interviews to have specific answers to have specific data to put inside our DSS. And of course, to do that, it was necessary to collect uh, materials. So uh, city statuses were one of the materials that were needed, draft questions, create guidelines, and in the end, provide online survey. You will be able to find those online survey on the web of Seoul project. Maybe we can share it with you after the webinar as well, together with the material uh, that we will share with you. Um, this survey um, is able to provide to the people working on DSS some important information. Um, the category of this information are depicted here in the presentation, but what is important is that uh, uh, from this type of survey, we can have a clear insight on the defects that now they have us. Um, desire that the customer that are using the hub have and what COVID-19 has specifically changed in the perspective of the customer. And this is very important because this means that the DSS that we are creating could be used as well in pandemic condition to change temporarily the usage of a specific hub related to the needs of the pandemic itself. So we learn a, um, a lot of things. We learn a lot or we receive a lot of message and those uh, lot of message are now in the phase of being synthesized in order to be put in the framework of action in the concept of the DSS uh, um, itself. Um, here you have the methodology that has been uh, uh, used to synthesize this lesson learned. I want to spend a lot of uh, a point here because uh, what is important is this slide. Because in the end, what we will be able to hand over to this DSS throughout this type of analysis is the customer journey map. And uh, the customer journey map to, uh, related to the hub but not only this, as well a methodology to create, to analyze and to store a customer journey map when you want to make a DSS. And this is extremely, extremely important, as I was saying before, because without that, all the action that the municipality could take 
could be useless or could could be um, a damage instead of a benefit for the city and for the customer itself. Um, so the people are working on this um, journey map in order to integrate it inside the DSS and the journey map is created in um, feelings, feelings coming from the people. So are you feeling abandoned? Are you feeling disappointed and so on and so forth? So that uh, it is possible to create, create a non-linear flow chart to provide those journey maps. And I, I've tried to do my best to speak to you about this work. Uh, for sure, if you have a specific question on that, please contact directly me and then we transfer those questions to uh, Professor Matrai, who was the leader of this type of research. And um, I, could, I will collect all your questions on that point. Uh, and as I was saying before, I will uh, transmit them to uh, Professor Matrai and then I will come back to you with the proper answer. Um, so this point is closed and I will give the floor to another important puzzle piece inside of this project, which is uh, um, all the work that TUM University has performed here because uh, thanks to the designing uh, department of TUM, we were able as mobility expert to change our mind and to manage in a different way the development of the DSS. So here we have a Professor Kelhammer from Tum University. The floor is yours and uh, let's look at the design thinking approach that changed our mind during this year. Thank you, Marco. So thank you, Laura. I hope you can see uh, my screen now. Um, I'm not a professor yet, but very warm welcome from the TU Munich. And um, I would like to talk about the design thinking approach and like how um, yeah, this helped us to support or supporting um, decisions and the decision making in mobility hubs and managing. As we have heard already um, from Milos and also thank you, um, Laura, from, for the, from the user's experience side, um, the hub um, addresses a lot of touch points. Um, in between users, stakeholders, and product service systems. And um, therefore, I think the design thinking approach can really help to kind of um, frame and structure this. So you might have heard about the design thinking process um, already. And um, we have mainly like four phases, the discover, the define, the develop, and the deliver phase. And there are two different kinds of um, thinking. The, there is one this divergent thinking, um, like in the discover phase, like to really deep dive in user experiences, user needs, understanding the users and um, what kind of um, uh, inspiration is. Um, we do not see the presentation. We see the um, uh, we see just one slide, Marco. Oh, sorry for that. Is it working now? Yes. OK. So, um, again, the design thinking process, you can see here the double diamond with these four faces I've mentioned. Um, um, discover and develop is the diverging thinking part, like to get, in, to get inspired um, um, to find solutions to understand users' needs. And then you have the define phase, like to frame the problem and to delivering to test out a solution. And I like this illustration by the British Design Council you see here because it's kind of a globe. And um, so there is no end and beginning. And there is on the one side the challenge with it, with, with it um, which can be like the um, making hubs more sustainable, um, CO2 reductions or other KPIs. And on the other hand side, there is an outcome, but that's always an iterative process. And um, the one outcome might be the next challenge. And you have different kind of approaches, like one is the leadership approach, which might be more of a top-down approach, like to creating the conditions to work on the governance structures, um, cultural change and mindset, with, which are really important at the mobility and transformation. And the engagement sphere, like um, the bottom-up approach, like really to build relationships between different cities and stakeholders and partners. Um, so um, as we already saw, I would briefly um, come back to the module structure where we have like um, one, um, the module zero, which is kind of the landing page 
um, for different users, like non-expert users and expert users, because we also want to invite the hub users um, in this decision and support systems. And um, on the right hand side, you see the module structures um, like the goals, validation, system, hub user, actions and versions. So in the next slides, I would like to show you how we go through the four phases of the design thinking process and which kind of modules address what kind of phase or thinking. So coming back at the mobility hubs as like a common ground for negotiation between the different stakeholders, users and like the product service systems. Um, the first phase is like the discovery, like really to understand the users, who are they, what are they doing and why are they doing this or that, to understand their behavior and um, so stay human centered and really try to understand and research on that rather than assume just that they need this or that solution. Um, we address this with the hub user module um, and the module of system level performance. Then the second phase define the challenge. Um, this is on the specific parameters from the discover phase. Um, like you can set the goals in the goal setting modules like the reduce uh, um, CO2 emissions or NOx emissions or making the access of hubs more comfortable. Um, so um, and you can also um, validate the, the data you have already um, in, in these challenges. So you might see what kind of direction you can go in the in the decision making. Then um, there is the develop or encourage participation phase. Um, like again, invite the stakeholders, invite the hub users to work together on different answers to the defined problem, co-design um, and bring the people and stakeholders together. Here again, this DSS, um, so DSS should really function as a um, kind of a round table, a communication tool which brings together different perspectives, the planners' perspectives, the stakeholders' perspectives, and very important, the users' perspectives, and get inspired by all of them. Um, so this should be kind of a very um, um, informative um, kind of setting. And you can work in this like uh, in labs or roundtables and, and really um, design and, and experience some, some uh, inspirations there. That's addressed in the actions module. Um, we have an action register and prioritization. And again, the hub users module, um, what kind of defines the diff or um, brings in the different hub users. Um, the last um, is the deliver phase, like the prototype and the testing. So test our potential small scale solutions, um, evaluate them and improve them. And here we have this iterative process again, like. Um, you can test the solutions, but you, with the information and knowledge you get from this learning process, you can start the process again. And um, that's kind of um, made visible in the, in the system level performance, like you can see the status you reached already. Um, and here again, this kind of um, solutions or actions are well connected to the hub users experience again, as Laura mentioned it. So I would like to give you a glimpse at the wireframes of the interface for the DSS uh, we've been working on. Um, it's a web-based tool and um, as you see here at the landing page, it should address like different kind of users, non-experts and experts users. Um, and you have kind of a map here, it's a very um, general Europe, map of Europe, but then you can have like your city or your hubs in the city or like the hub environment. Um, you can have a personalized profile and that also kind of should manage the interaction between the involved um, stakeholders in the planning process. And for this um, interface, we also took this human, uh, this design thinking approach, like really to understand the planners needs. And um, um, yeah, we're looking forward to get feedback on that. We um, only have wireframes in the first phase, so um, this needs to be tested out, but um, we um, have this from the feedback from the first year. So um, I show you two um, wireframes of two modules. The one is the hub users, as I mentioned, um, you can have different kind of personas of hub users, um, seeing their um, needs and wants and what kind of um, modes of transport they might prefer and why. And you can also add new personas and can, you can add your information and knowledge about your personal hub users um, and kind of cluster them within like hub socionas, like by income groups, by age groups, or people with um, uh, special 
um, needs and wants. And very important is also like you can get uh, real time feedback like anecdotes or some kind of um, statements like um, Google comments or or other things like that you have kind of a real time feedback seeing the set rate of certification of your hub users. And um, next to this, uh, there is um, the wireframe of the action module. So you can see different kind of actions. Um, you can prioritize them and you see the status um, like connected to the goal. Um, is this kind of action contributing to the set goal? And um, it should also inspire you by kind of having different kind of um, clusters of action and you can set different views um, like uh, the map view showing like the actions located around your hub but also like a list view um, with kind of different categories inspire you and you can also um, add more and more actions cluster them so that it's kind of a learning process and you can share it within all the planners um, taking part on, on your hub um, development. Um, uh, I worked on this with my team, Elif Simga and Svenja from the Professorship of Urban Design. And yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Marco. I think that you gave everybody an insight of the new approach that we have to this problem. So uh, now we are going to the final part of this webinar. Uh, we have dedicated the last presentation to answer a question that I would have had if I had attended uh, in a webinar such as this one. So we have done a lot, we have worked a lot, but then what in the end? What are the perspectives and opportunities that are put on the market by this type of work? And this is something that uh, Professor Mladenovic from Aalto University will share with you in this last presentation. That is maybe something more, the, the most important part. So how to exploit this type of studies, this type of work, this new solution. So Minos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everyone else, um, uh, for the information provided so far. So let's focus on, on the last uh, piece of the puzzle. So again, if we turn um, turn back to a larger overview of this being a modular uh, decision support system and the fact that we have been uh, working um, for the last year trying to manage this complex uh, environment and enable the development of something that would actually be uh, useful uh, for practice, not just um, fall into some of the, the previous um, challenges of how these decision support systems have been developed. We're talking about um, a system that, of course, um, relies on um, both strengths of um, people in these processes, but also on digital technologies, so trying to kind of combine the, the benefits of both worlds. Um, so we have, as you have seen, Marco has shown you some of the wireframes of the of the uh, web-based system. These are some of the other ones as well of, of system performance and, and goal setting and so on. So basically that's the, the bottom line setting. And um, if we now ask the question of, okay, so what what is the, the, the actual gap here? Yeah. So if we talk about the market niche, um, if we think about all the different tools that we already have on the market, uh, we would claim that uh, many of these tools uh, face usability or usefulness uh, gaps. And, and uh, tools, of course, are not just uh, those uh, commercial tools. We're also talking about um, commercial uh, by private partners or commercial by um, academic sector or even open access tools that are around around um, uh, on the market. So basically, either they do not really provide the functionality that we need for dealing with these kinds of complex challenges at the level of, of urban uh, mobility hubs that we just talked about, or they sometimes um, are just not, not usable. They are not usable um, uh, on the fact that um, uh, Sometimes there is you know, challenges with, with, with data resolution. Sometimes there is uh, kind of uh, too much time that it actually needs to uh, to be calculated something or or they are often problem with with open access 
tools is that they don't have updates or technical support and so on. So with this market niche in mind, uh, we have, of course, uh, at the same time been thinking about uh, use cases and users. I already uh, mentioned many uh, different kinds of use cases uh, that are potentially there around urban mobility hubs. Um, and here are some other examples of developing actions, um, packages of actions or collaborating uh, to actually find um, new partners to um, take certain actions that previously were not available or reallocating resources. There are many different actions that are not necessarily just about um, directly design or um, change this um, aspect or that other aspect. Uh, so this also pushes us to think about the, the, the new use cases and of course uh, pushes us to think about that market is of course uh, in this case consisting of not necessarily, even if of course municipalities and, and, and the public sector in the city is the core a set of stakeholders here. Uh, there are many other uh, stakeholders for whom uh, such decision support system with certain levels of access, of course, uh, should be uh, should be useful. So we're talking about service providers or other other participants that might uh, be there. Sometimes, for example, um, uh, non-government organizations or or, or uh, other kinds of um, public-private uh, organizations. And of course, at the end of the day, the value proposition for this, um, this kind of a decision support system is something we have talked about already at the very beginning. We're talking about um, immediate behavioral change, quality of, uh, of life for, for residents. We, of course, need to talk about long-term effects uh, of, of transformation of our urban environments. Uh, on the level of organizations, we're talking about capacity building of different stakeholders. We're talking about long-term knowledge exchange across stakeholders, which of course leads to questions of building trust and other, other aspects that are uh, a lot more um, uh, very often that's needed in these, these kinds of in these kinds of environments, on top of the fact that of course we need resources and other and other uh, aspects like that. And of course, we had to think about that such um, uh, DSS system should be transferable across uh, different cases. So we had three different cities um, as a as, uh, playground here, but technically they should be um, transferable to other, other locations. And um, at the core of this, if we talk about the business model itself, is uh, some kind of a B2B uh, software as a service uh, set up with different levels you might have there, uh, such as you know, core, uh, just uh, purchasing the, the access rights um, to the web-based system, advanced with more maybe more training or some customization, and then complete with further customization, further support uh, levels. So that's that part of, of the whole uh, picture, I would say. So with that, I think we can uh, end this part of our presentations. And maybe we can open up for some questions. Yeah, th thank you very much, Milos, for uh, this overview. And uh, we can open for the question. I have uh, some for you. First one is that um, why should we understand both system and user perspective? Maybe you can uh, deepen a little bit more this aspect. Um, for the mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, so I have been trained as a transport engineer, and 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 in the past we have always been trained, you know, think about the system, uh, measure the system, measure, measure mold split, measure traffic volumes, uh, various other kinds of things, and that's definitely important um, to understand. Uh, but without understanding also the user perspective, you're kind of missing missing uh, the part of the picture. Also, on the other side, some disciplines have too oftentimes been focused on on the on the user level, forgetting that the fact that Transport is also a system, and there are some kinds of system dynamics challenges um, over there. But um, on a kind of practical example, um, if I would just have a mode split percentages uh, uh, coming out of, of any kind of a tool telling me that, okay, now we have 40% public transport use and 30% car use and whatever else uh, remains there, this doesn't really help me make any decisions about behavioral change. Like who should change their behavior? for us to change model splits. 
It doesn't, it doesn't go back to that kind of a level of action. Also, on the other side, if I just understood that we have challenges that, you know, for one group of people has challenges in accessing uh, the hub, it would also not tell us completely, like, if we make some changes for this group of people, are we going to actually then disadvantage some other people uh, as well in the, in the larger system? So basically, you need to know both sides of this picture uh, if you're going to do um, effective decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Milos, very much for your clarification. And then there is another aspect that uh, I ask you to elaborate um, a bit more in the sense that is uh, um, essential and trivial to better understand the exploitation of this DSS. Uh, you were speaking about existing tools, and those existing tools seem to have gaps both in usefulness and usability. Could you tell us something more about that to make more effective understanding of the exploitation itself? Yes, certainly. So, um, so basically, very often um, these tools have been made with a very different um, mindset um, in mind. They have been made. All all these tools basically have roots in the in the twentieth. Uh, 20th century, and we are now dealing with 21st century, uh, let's say, problems. So, um, of course, there is a range there. That's something we need to recognize that there are fully commercial tools and 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 some tools that are coming uh, coming from the from the academic sector. Uh, but let's just talk about their usefulness. Let's not talk about the fact that sometimes the model doesn't take this input data, or sometimes the calculation time is is too high or or um, uh, there is no technical support. Those are those usability um, uh, challenges and they can always be overcome uh, one way or another with with uh, better technical um, uh, development. But then the, the larger question here is usefulness. Yeah. So what are exactly um, the decisions that we are supposed to be making? How what kind of processes we should be having? And, and the main problem is that a lot of these tools that have been there in the past, um, they are not really accounting for a lot of these new tasks we should be having uh, for um, uh, for urban mobility hubs, for example. Yeah. So uh, uh, if you think about urban mobility hubs having multiple stakeholders at the table, you cannot come with a tool that is, in a sense, black boxing something. It's closing the the analytical process behind or it's closing how did we get to this number so you cannot have one side of stakeholders running a transport model oftentimes these you know large large models that are there and you just kind of come to the table with like final final uh maps and graphs that doesn't really have long-term learning knowledge exchange what is actually actually is the, the underlying problem here and then eventually doesn't even um help in kind of building building trust between let's say the transport planner and then the the, the, um, the railway system operator and then maybe some other kind of op service operators and so on so one one example is this kind of black boxing of tools that oftentimes we have had in the past that in a sense are seeking for some kind of technical rationality um, dream but in fact are not really helping us uh, deal with with uh, the actual complexity of planning in reality. I hope this makes it uh, a bit clearer, <laughs> let's say, as one of, one of the examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that Midosh made it perfectly clear because uh, it is more clear now why this represents an opportunity um, for everyone on the market with this type of TSS. Then I have just one last question, which is uh, for Dario. Um, if you can uh, list uh, really briefly the type of data that Milan is putting inside this TSS, and then after that we will go for the conclusion. Yes, in the Milan case, we collected the data about, uh, like I said before, parking, uh, cycle stairs, shared mobility service information because uh, we in of amat support the city of um, the city of uh, milan to collect and uh, provide main data set. for instance in the last periods we collect uh, other type of data 
uh, from cyclic, cyclists like uh, Travahat or from vehicles like Tonton Data or um, other uh, data, data, data providers, for instance, through uh, mobile phone data to define the trip of users and uh, build a origin destination matrix. And uh, I noticed that uh, collecting data from uh, the three cities, uh, there are very um, similar aspects uh, in the collection data. It's obvious that some aspects are different due to the legislation, due to the regulation. And for this reason, it's um, essential guaranteeing the interoperability from data for each cities and for all cities. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dario. Thank you very much uh, to everyone. I just uh, point out one thing. Tomorrow there will be an additional webinar related to Seoul, and more in specific, we will go through city needs uh, that have uh, steered all this type of work. Uh, so all of you, if you are interested, just register for the webinar also for tomorrow. You will receive the link and so you will be able to participate as well. Um, the webinar will be from 10 to 11 and um, the presentation that you have seen today will make you available, of course, as well as the registration. So I thank you once more all the speakers and all the participants for the time that you have dedicated to um, our webinar and so enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye bye to everyone. See you tomorrow, please. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.